now we discuss the data types that we can use in JavaScript. First and foremost, for those who have experienced other languages like C or C++ or even Java, JavaScript is, a, uh, is different as it is an untyped language. What it means by untyped is that you do not need to, uh, to specify the type of the data when instantiating a variable as you have seen in the last video. You just put the data in the variable and you can change the data and even the data type in a variable without any problems. Given these, there are three primitive types and two starting non-primitive types in JavaScript. So let's go over there in the script now. So we'll remove this. So the first three primitive data types, uh, the first of the three um, primitive data types is number, as we have shown before. So uh, it can be uh, an integer, which we can see here, and it can be a float, 1.5, which is um, a value that has a, um, a dot. Okay, the second uh, primitive uh, data type is uh, a boolean. So it can be true and it can be false. And lastly is string. So it can be in um, single quotation marks. Can be in double quotation marks, and it can be uh, using backticks. For our purpose and start, uh, standardization, we will use the single quotation marks. Now the thing is, when using back quotes, it's not really good if you are just using as is, but it's good if we are um, concatenating two different um, two different variables as you as we can see it in here. So if I do this, it's effectively the same as backticks plus, oh well, there's already a space, plus E plus this one plus uh, F. So as you can see here, this is a, uh, a bit more readable than this one so we'll just comment it out now to switch the type of a variable into a number we can use parse int or parse float depending on what we need so like let's say we have h here that is in string that is 1.7 we can create um, parse int of that uh, of that one h and we can also um, create a parse float of h if making it like this so if i save it and run it in our browser you can see that this is the this is i which we parse the h here and this is um j the thing with parse parse int and parse float is if i make this as a string meaning there is no number in it we can see the value nan which means not a number now for strings so let's say i do this hello world uh, and then I do can K 
okay l i do this k dot replace and i say world to dj what i uh, what i did there is to replace an instance uh, or a, a matched word which is world into tj so if i print it out if i print out the original uh, in comparison to the replaced one can see hello world and we can see here hello tj because we have effectively changed world into tj here uh, the thing is we can also create like uh, let's say space we can also create an array from it using split and using a separator so uh, what i used is a, a space and it will separate it into different um, elements so if i console log this one so console log k and then this one i would be seeing hello world and hello from outer space and then this is the in essence um, a series or an, uh, a set of words that came from this sentence or this string uh, and is separated by space so now that uh, we are using arrays as you can see here Arrays are one of the starting non-primitive data, uh, data types in JavaScript that we can use. Arrays can hold values of the same type. As you can see here, these are strings or of different types. And we can access the values using square brackets in the in uh, uh, square brackets and the index of that value where the first index would be always zero. So as you can see, this is the index. And if you want to access it, so if I want to access um, the first value, I would just do m square brackets 0. So it should show here. This is that one. If I change it to 3, it will use from because it starts from 0, 1, 2, and then 3. Now we can determine the number of elements in an array using the length property. So if we console.log m.length here and paste it, that means it's 6. It's the same number as we can see here. And we can say that this is uh, there are 6 elements inside the array because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, we can create an array using the new array um, uh, class. So it's like this, uh, uh, m n is equals to new array. But there's a more intuitive way, which is const n using square brackets as well. Um, now, if we are going to create from scratch, the most intuitive though is uh, and easily to wish, uh, easily um, to visualize is using the square bracket so we because we can do like this and we can see that it's already an array of um, elements that are numbers now um, let's just remove everything oh no no need to remove everything i just want to uh, show you uh the different ways that we can mutate the array as well as using um uh i mean uh, there are different ways that we can mutate the array using the following methods so the first one is n dot push so let's uh print it out
and then let's try it so as you can see when i tried pushing there's one two three four five and then when i uh before push there's one two three four five and after push um with number six i added number six here but um if i say 10 the number 10 is put at the right most of the array or the end of the array so this is the starting point and this is the end if i pop that we eventually remove it again if i do a shift it removes the starting point and if we do a unshift okay, let's say I add um, negative one it eventually adds the end there now uh, we can also create a different array from an array using map and um or a single value using reduce so uh if we do um let's say cons um o is equals to n dot map and then i'm going to add a a function here which is um uh element i mean uh let's use element uh return element plus five that means i'm going to add plus five to all the elements if we see the new variable we can see that negative one plus five is four two plus five is seven so this is the one after doing this three plus five is eight four plus five is nine five plus five is ten you can also do this where cons um, p is equals to n dot reduce function um, previews next where uh, it returns previews plus next so we'll just P. and if we do this it after we just created a summation negative 1 plus 2 is 1 plus 3 4 plus 4 8 plus 5 13 so that's the this one the reduce mm, the thing is we can also um, let's just mess around with the values here so like 4, uh, 2, 3, 7, uh, or 8. Let's uh, add 1. And then we can also effectively create like a sort. Oops, we should do this. So function, um, previews, and next. Uh, usually we have previews minus next and then we print it out you can see the original one is 1 14 2 3 8 5 it's a mix of um, actually it's not yeah it's a mix of um, numbers and we have sorted it from smallest to biggest depend and if we do this next minus three views we made a descending pattern using sort again um, this two uh, map and reduce doesn't mutate your your um, array while push pop shift unshift and sort uh, mutates your um array
Now, after we have done arrays, we are going to create objects. Objects are data structures that are uh, usually a series of key value pairs. So an array is, an, uh, is a specialized object because we, uh, we can, um, where you always have an integer, which is an index to be the key and its value would be the element in that index. And also the array also has a key called length, which uh, is the number of elements in the array. So in essence, um, an array would have uh, a key value pair already and as well as um, a, a property called length. Now creating objects is easy. We just use curly braces. So uh, for this example, x1, we can add We can add this, effectively creating a effectively creating a object as you can see here. X1, Y string, and Z equals true. Now take note that this is the uh, this is uh, sort of the same as scope, uh, scoping because we, we cannot access x without referencing to the object itself which is q. So to be able to get that um, value, we just use a dot notation. Either a dot, dot notation as you can see here, we have um, used one or a um, a string notation using square brackets and it's very useful for let's say um, key names that have like uh, spaces spaces in it so if we want to access it we will need square brackets let's start and um, that's how we are able to access an element using square brackets as well. You can also check if a particular um, key is in an object. So if we use the inward, we need to put it in quotation marks because we are checking the string version of it. So if we refresh it, we have true on this one because we can see that y is part of that object and false on this one because a is not part of that object. We can also delete a um, property using the delete keyword. So if I do this and then console log Q again, you can see that Z is not part of this object anymore. Now we can transform an object into an array uh, by using the object class. So if we do this, cons uh, qr is equals to object dot uh, keys of q. We can see we can see all of the keys in an array. If I do cons um, r s is equals to object dot values of q. We can do this. You can see all of the values instead of keys. And if we do t is equals to object that values. Oh, not values, but entries. Console dot log t. You can see here it is an array of um, array. And the first would be the key, and this is the value.
The thing with objects and arrays, we can extract values or variables from it. Uh, usually by doing this. So remember before, so I'm just going to delete all of this for now and delete all of the above. Oh no, no not really. We'll need the array later on. So let's just delete this. And for this example, I'm just going to also uh, delete this one. So for n is um so this let's say this is an array and this is an object obj now for an array uh what we can do uh to get variables of course is let's say a is equals to array uh zero and b is equals to array uh one and so on and so forth but there's a easier way we can just do const a b and it comes from array so if we do this and refresh you can see that 1 and 14 well, let's just print out array you can see that 1 and 14 was taken from the array itself it's taken from the array itself and put it on a and b we can also do like this one and it essence we get the last four numbers that were not part of b variables here so because we are taking the first and second variable all the rest will be put on a different array now let's say um let's say we have another array here array 2 um 23 for uh 45 and then what we do here is array 3 and it's it comes from new array and uh, what's that again array 2 and so if we print array 3 what we get is actually this one what we get is actually oops sorry not this one i should have this so 2385 this one and 235645 which we can see from here so that's how we can concatenate two different arrays in a single expression for getting the variables in an object again we can also do uh, we can do this x equals obj dot x and const y is equals to obj dot y but there is of course uh, an easier way of getting it we just destructure uh, it again x y and z is equals to obj console dot log x y and z just to show you that it works so one string and true uh, and true now we can also change the va the variable's name instead of using the property name as the variable itself let's say this is a number and this is a str and this is a boolean and so num str boolean and it will still show you the same value but now using a different variable now to know the types of the variables itself we can use the keyword type of so by using this 
it will return it will return a number, a string, and a boolean. If we do this type of an array and type of uh, type of an array and type of uh, of the object it will return the same thing because again an array is a specialized object now that we are done here let's go writing expressions conditional statements and loops